Okay, so this is going to be a refresher on uh, digitizing, and it might be easier for your first time to just do a point file with categories, like we'd said, um, where every point you just kind of click in the center and do the best you can and categorize it by um, over 50%, over 30%, and such and such. Um, I think I want to make this video about the um, polygons, um, just because it's harder to do them, and digitizing takes a little bit more kind of finesse. Um, so what I'd like to do is just focus on, um, I don't know if you remember, but I kind of did a, a couple different versions of this here. Um, and I thought that the Scotland area kind of matched pretty well. So I want to digitize, um, I'm going to create a couple shape files. And with polygons, I actually have to work kind of with separate files. I'm going to have one file shape file to start with be this over 50 um, percent manufacturing. And then I'll make a second shape file that will be this um, uh, uh, over 30, which is under you know between 30 and 50 percent. So um, I'll just digitize these two darker places up here to begin with. And um, the first thing to do is go up and make a new layer, a new shape file layer, right? That's kind of the beginning of any digitizing is creating the empty shape file um, into which we make our changes. So um, Obviously, we're not doing a point, we're not doing a line, we're doing a polygon, which means that it's a shape that's filled like this. I chose polygon, and I want our CRS, our coordinate reference system, to match um, our the one that we're using for our project. So I go to 100,001 here. That's the proper one. And because my categories are actually going to be stored as separate shape files, I don't need to add a category attribute here. So I think I'm going to just leave this alone and say, OK. All right. And then it asks me, where do I want to put this new shape file I'm making? And I'm going to put mine in my Lab 6 folder, which you may have to navigate to that, right? You might have to go to your desktop, find your Lab 6 folder. And then I'm going to call mine uh, manufacturing um, density underscore over 50. So why I, I called this over 50 because this is representing places where over 50% of the working population is dedicated to um, to manufacturing. Um, and then I'll make another shape file for the over 30 and, and actually call that 030. But this is good for now. So I say save. And what pops in here is a it, it looks like the default was a uh, purple or oh, a pinkish color um, but nothing came in because I haven't actually made anything yet right I just I just wrote down on the computer I said make me a blank shape file and the computer said okay and it put it under data underscore lab six and so now um, I want to activate that layer in my layer panel and then um, I can go to toggle editing and that's going to enable me to to make the edit so toggle editing and create feature add feature like that so the first thing I want to do is um, I'm gonna trace this line here because that that actually that one really matters right that one is exactly from the map There's there's kind of these two there are different types of boundaries right there's um, uh, I don't know what we would call um, this is just kind of a, a man-made boundary, or a, this is our idea of this boundary. We don't know exactly how the cartographers chose this boundary, but we're trusting them, and it's it's through human means, right? This is a natural boundary here, this one that goes along the coast here. And so that natural boundary, we're going to trust our shape file, and we want our data to match the shape file. Um, here this is the the coastline natural boundary that the cartographers use and we just know that from comparing it with the data that we want to use that it's it's kind of different it's not exact so it doesn't really do us any good to trace this natural boundary it's going to look messy and awkward so what i do is i intentionally overlap into the ocean right so i'm going to go like this and then i'm going to click along like this oh and you see these green things here the green X is a um, is an invalid geometry. It's when when you try to cross the lines, and you're not supposed to do that with a shape file. Um, because we haven't finished a shape file, it doesn't really matter. It's just telling me that you shouldn't finish a shape file right now because you have an invalid geometry. 
if I keep digitizing and I get really messed up, let's say I just click all over the place and I have lots of invalid geometries, I can always hit the backspace key and just kind of get rid of those like that, right? And so as I click along, you'll see it will disappear once the shape is proper. And I keep clicking along, a couple of them pop up, but then they go away when I make sure I am doing it correctly. I'm getting happy towards the end here. Oops, I didn't really like that. So I'm going to go back, 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 and then go back more in the middle there. And I might be tempted to follow it like that because this matches up more closely. But if you toggle back and forth between the two layers, you'll find out that this is the ocean here, um, according to our, our um, source map. So I actually, I don't want to create a gaping hole here with nothing. I'm just going to go straight out into the ocean like this. And when I'm done, I'm happy, and I, I right-click, and then I can give it an ID number, and there's my shape. And so remember, the whole point of this is to create, so that we can create our own maps that have blobs that mean things, <laughs> based on the thematic map. And right now, this looks ugly, but if I put the ocean on top, it kind of it cleanly trims it right to that particular spot and you can actually see that our ocean file doesn't exactly <laughs> match our um, our land file but um, if you zoom out enough it it's kind of generalized I think um, adequately so so anyway um, that will help us get thing make things look more clean like that right adding the ocean on top for that kind of thing and when I'm happy with my first blob I can say save save the layer edits and I toggle it off and there's my first um, geo-referenced kind of unit um, so I think I want to do one more because this that one was easy it was contiguous I want to do one more that has these little holes in it here okay so I'm gonna I'm actually gonna digitize this section in here and just a quick reference it looks like the coast is a little wonky here, so I'm going to cut right in and do the same trick um, around the coast. And then uh, kind of keep it generalized up in here and go to the coast or go out to the ocean. And then what I want to do is try to create this hole and this hole and that divot there as well. So, so the next thing I do is I'm going to, I had just saved this, but I'm going to toggle editing back on and create a new feature. And I'll just start right in here from the ocean. I'm going in here because I know that this is the coast in, in that one. And I'm just going to drag it right along. If you really care about getting these exact, you should put a lot more control points and time and effort and energy um, into making these coastlines agree. Um, you can tell that this curve right here should have matched up to there. There are some differences that are not recon uh, you can't reconcile some of the differences but so I'm at the ocean now and I want to keep this crisp coastline so I'm gonna just follow it out through the water here like this those islands aren't showing up so I'm gonna not include them like this I'm staying out in the ocean let's go all the way down here and let's just go in right here and now I follow this wavy line Good. So I didn't try to draw circles around these because now when I go back out and I don't want to cut the end of that island off, I go back out like this, I finish, and I give this ID 2. This is my new blob, right? And it cuts nice and crisp to the ocean like that. But I, I need to create those little holes now, those places where, um, according to our data, it says they're, it's, it's not like that. So to do that, I'm actually going to make this new polygon I made transparent slightly. So what I'll do is I'll go to properties here, even while it's in edit mode. And let's make it 50% transparent. That's pretty good. And now I can go, um, and what I'm gonna do is use a, a new tool that will help me cut this um, in my editing toolbar. This editing toolbar is actually the simple one. There's a more complex one that I'll show you how to find. You can go to View Toolbars, and it, it's called Advanced Digitizing Toolbar. So take a mental shot of that in your head. 
uh, view toolbar advanced digitizing toolbar so we click that on and we get a whole bunch more tools and we're still in edit mode which is good whenever you're in edit mode you can see those little X's that's a good sign so I've got that highlighted like that and um, I think what I'm gonna do is it's called add ring and so we're telling it we we want it to have inside of it kind of this ring so I say add ring and I can click around a circle like that okay and when I'm done I can right click and it creates a nice neat little ring and I can do that a couple of times that's pretty good and that's pretty good um, and I might even just crisply to the coast remember just out like that and that's pretty good so now I say save toggle the editing again shut off the other layers and I've got some kind of semblance of a thematic map going on here, which is really cool. Um, so that's kind of a very quick introduction to digitizing. Um, there's other things that you would want to think about if you were going to start adding layers, um, the different categories, right? This is so far I've done all one type of category. If you wanted to add in these other categories and merge them all together so it was nice and neat and clean, there's a couple other things you could do, like um, trimming those polygons so that they go underneath or get clipped by the other ones, right? So just like the coastline trick, if I was going to digitize this polygon, um, I might intentionally go underneath this one to make it look crisp and clean. So there's a couple of different tricks that way. Um, if you ever, if you're going to end up doing something like this for your project, let me know. But in general, if you're getting into digitizing and georeferencing, I would suggest starting with point digitizing and line digitizing because it's a little easier. So um, I hope that makes sense, and um, good luck. Uh, I hope I hope it's useful to you.